Hey guys and gals, it's Derek here. Welcome to the fourth video of the Aruba Bots REST APIs and Python series. In today's video, we'll discuss the operations performed by the basic provision workflow and how you can adapt and or apply it for your specific use cases. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that it's a good idea to perform git pull on the repo regularly so you'll always have the latest updates. As its name suggests, this workflow is used to provision a basic configuration on an unconfigured access switch. This workflow by default uses the data.yaml file as its data source. You could change the read yaml call to read another yaml file by passing in a file name as the argument in the function call. For clarity's sake, I've commented out the lines in the data.yaml file that aren't used in this particular workflow. Now let's take a step back and look at the big picture of the basic provision workflow by reading the comments outlining the workflow steps. The workflow names ports, creates VLANs, prints VLANs on the system, creates lags, I'll stop here for a second and point something out to prevent you from experiencing the same confusion that I did. In this repository, you'll often see this phrase trunk groups or trunks. In the context of Aruba OS switch, these phrases refer to lags. I'll call these trunk groups slash trunks lags to avoid confusion with VLAN trunking, which is passing traffic from multiple VLANs on one port. In any case, after creating the lags, the workflow prints the lags on the system, associates the lags and the VLANs, creates a device profile and device identity, and lastly, runs cable diagnostic tests on ports. So that's the overview of the workflow. Now let's get into the weeds and further break down the steps of the workflow. The first step, excluding the login operation, is to name the ports. This data variable is populated with all the data in the source data YAML file. This data port refers to the contents of the port variable in data.yaml. Then we assign this port name variable to hold the list of dictionaries with each dictionary containing an ID field and a name field. The source data dictates that ports 10 through 13 will be named phone, phone, employee, and employee respectively. The name ports function in the ports module takes a single dictionary and uses that data to name one port at a time. That's why we have this loop to call the name ports function for each dictionary in the port name list. The next operation is to create VLANs. In data.yaml, we see the VLAN variable, which contains a list of two dictionaries. Each dictionary contains a VLAN ID field and name field. The create VLAN function in the VLAN module takes a dictionary and uses that data to create one VLAN at a time. Like with the name ports function calls, we use a loop here to call the create VLAN function for each dictionary in the VLAN data list. Next is printing the VLANs on the system. This step is included as a feedback or confirmation step just to show to the user during execution that the VLANs are successfully created. The get VLAN function in the VLAN module gets all the VLANs. It doesn't take any data as arguments except for the URI and session cookie. This step doesn't perform any configuration, so if you want to, you can remove it. Following that, the workflow creates lags. Let's take a look at the LACP port variable in the data.yaml file. The LACP port variable is also a list of dictionaries. Looking at the variable's contents, 
we can deduce that the ports 10 and 11 are going to be assigned to lag TRK1 and ports 12 and 13 are going to be assigned to lag TRK2. Again, note that in Aruba OS switch, trunk groups and lags are the same thing. Anyways, in this step we are creating two lags, TRK1 and TRK2, each with two member ports. Once again, we use the for loop here to make repeated calls to the create LECP port function to assign each port to a lag one port at a time. The next step is printing the lags on the system. Like the previous operation to print the VLANs on the system, this step provides feedback and reassurance that the aggregation of our ports into lags was successful. The next step is to take our lags and associate VLANs to them. So we loop over the VLAN port variable, which contains this list of two dictionaries. Each is an association between a VLAN and a lag port with a specific port mode. Here, VLAN 102 will be assigned to lag TRK1 in POM tagged static mode, and the same will be done for VLAN 103 on TRK2. And once again, these two operations are done one at a time through the for loop. The next step is to create a device profile and device identity. In this example, we are creating a device profile and device identity for phones. The device profile specifies Tag to VLAN 102. The last step in the workflow is to run cable diagnostic tests on specified ports. We have a port list variable which contains a list of port numbers. The cable diagnostics tests are run on each port. Note here that the test cable diagnostics range function actually takes a list of port numbers as an argument and within the function execution is a loop that runs the cable diagnostics tests for all port numbers in the list that was passed in as the argument. Now that we've walked through the workflow, let's run it and see what happens. While the workflow ran, it gave us feedback on what it was doing. Firstly, it successfully named ports 10 through 13. Next, it successfully created VLANs 102 and 103. It prints out all the VLANs to the screen. The ports are successfully aggregated into lags. The VLANs are assigned to the lags. The creation of the phone's device profile is successful, as well as its subsequent association with VLAN 102. The device identity is successfully created. Lastly, the cable diagnostics tests are successfully run on ports 2, 3, and 9. For each port, information about cable length, cable status, and MDI pair is shown. Now we can go to the Switch CLI interface and verify that all steps of the workflow were successfully executed and that the switch was provisioned as we wanted it to be. I execute show config, we see that ports are aggregated in the lags, the ports are named, the VLANs are created and associated to the lags, and the device profile and device identity have been configured. Now I do show cable diagnostics and I can see the cable diagnostics information as well. You'll likely need to modify this workflow so that it applies to your usage scenario. You could use different VLANs, different port names and numbers, lag names, port modes, device profiles and identities, and so on. You could add extra operations for any configuration steps not already performed in this workflow, or you could remove any steps that you find unnecessary. Also, there's another workflow in the folder called Cleanup Basic Provision. I won't demo it as it's extremely self-explanatory, but the gist of it is that the cleanup workflow essentially unconfigures everything that is configured by the Basic Provision workflow. Before I sign off, I have something important to say. 
On behalf of our entire automation TME team, I'd like to thank you all for the feedback and questions you've been giving to us. A lot of this communication has been coming via emails, but a better place to get in touch with us is the Airheads Developer Community, a forum where all interested parties can share knowledge and collaborate. I'll leave a link to the forum in the description below. As always, thanks for watching and see you next time.